look at the Somali students, right, they have the highest level of persistence. But when you look at the literature and you talk about as those students become racialized, and when I say racialized, as they're treated more towards African-Americans, like the African-American students who are born in this country, you start seeing their academic measures start going down and actually become closer to African-American measures. Okay, and so what is, how does the acculturation process impact your persistence and your idea, right? So, um, you know, if you're an immigrant, do you have a dominant mindset? Um, I went to a historically black college. I'll share my own experiences. Um, for four years, I didn't have to think about race, okay? And that was such a freedom. I mean, it was such a freedom of not having to think about race. So I was just in the classroom and I was achieving. I didn't have to think about whether or not the teacher wanted to treat me fairly or not. I knew that my work was, was really completely aligned with the, with the, with the, the, the icon was completely aligned with the work that I put in. So we really, really look at what does that look like for African American students versus our um, Somali students and other groups? Um, how does that change persistence relative to how long you've been in the country? Um, also, we want to look at, uh, um, as we're looking at this, how do we present these findings with an asset lens? Uh, rather than a, a deficit, right? So one of the things we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure that we don't identify students as being problematic if they have low levels of persistence. And again, that's why I want to be able to take a look as a department. We want to be able to look at how does it differ in different settings, in different structures, right? Because I'm convinced, uh, and, and the data shows that Michael presented, but I'm very convinced that students are going to persevere. They're, they have persistence in some domain. Okay, students are attracted to things that they do well. But how do we present this right in a way that, that shows that the, every student has the ability to be persistent, they all have assets, they're all good at something, and, they, and we can take that information and apply it to the classroom setting. Every student has the opportunity to learn, every student has the capability to do well in class. Right? That's more of an asset-based perspective on that. Um, and then I think the last thing is, um, you know, there's an opportunity for out-of-school time and K-12 for us to learn from each other. Um, and this is, will be a nice way for us to do that. Um, and then I think the second point, impact of instructional practices and resources. One of the things we have now is we have the measure, but what do we need to do now is we need to start developing some concrete strategies to increase the levels of persistence, to increase some of the social emotional skills.